what's your name? My name is Jeffrey Bethier. Right on. And Jeffrey, what are your favorite things about being a member of the Disability and Human Rights Group? Um, there's a whole variety of those things. Um, but what I wouldn't mind doing is um, giving a bit of history of my connection with the Disability and Human Rights Group. I've been involved with the Disabilities and Human Rights Group since its inception in 2008. Um, there were activists in the disabled community that, uh, like James, Brad, Zanti, along with the executive director of the Social Planning Council, that had determined that there's a lot of people that were uh, with disabilities that were isolated on their own, and that it might be a good idea if they connected with one another and then could work together using our collective lived experiences to um, uh, to better our lives as well as for others. Uh, and at that first meeting, there were about 20 different people with as diverse a possibility of, of uh, ability, disabilities that you can possibly imagine. And in the early days, although I was part of the group of 10 to 20 people, um, it was primarily, and I was an equal and considered an equal, uh, James and Brad, Zanthi, and the executive director, Trudy, um, they really gave us a solid foundation. And some of the original goals that we had set for ourselves came out of discussions about what we wanted for the group, uh, what were some of the values, what were some of the principles, came up with sort of a mission statement of sorts over a number of meetings. And we were meeting just once a month, but nonetheless, um, there was a major emphasis on um, inclusion. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things. Um, but I know that uh, the first time that I was experiencing it, I felt that it was the first time that I, as somebody with disabilities, had a voice, uh, was included as an equal. Um, that I was heard, um, and you know, other people likewise felt that they were heard, which leads me to one of the um, fundamental characteristics of the Disability Human Rights Group, and that is that we're on the cutting edge of inclusion, and I didn't even really know exactly what inclusion meant or to the extent of what we were involving ourselves with inclusion because there are times where we're being so inclusionary that we're actually causing ourselves problems because we're trying so hard. Um, we agreed that everyone's voice had value and that no matter what level of education, experience, speaking ability, or other variabilities that people had, we needed to make space for everyone and everybody's opinions mattered everybody's opinions had value um, and we needed to make space for people's different communication styles. They need to be respected and accommodated. In fact, um, that brings up one of the highlights and lowlights of my experience with the, uh, with the group and that was that there was one person that came fairly regularly to our early meetings and just as regularly would get stuck on one particular topic or one issue, had to tell their story over and over again. And we as a group, I could feel myself and then others biting our tongues and being a bit frustrated that this person, we weren't accomplishing what we had set out to accomplish in a meeting. And, uh, and so we were being accommodating and accommodating because we were to be inclusionary. That said, um, eventually, um, just by fluke, um, we came to uh, realize that after probably dozens of meetings, this person couldn't read a word. He was illiterate, an adult in his 40s or 50s or something. And um, he couldn't read a word, much less read an agenda or um, a report or something that they we're putting forward, you know, what a concept, you know, like it was a real eye-opener for me. 
but we, we did allow for those accommodations. Um, another highlight for me was having the, the ability to, or the opportunity to facilitate a group in a public forum on disabilities and aging that uh, we partnered with, with a group out of uh, out, out West. And uh, I think it was Winnipeg, if I'm not mistaken, that we did a public forum and uh, I was asked if I would be willing to facilitate a group discussion. And I hadn't done anything up with that, to that point. I didn't feel like I had the skills and it was kind of nervous. But I thought that with the faith that people had in me, I thought maybe I could go for that. Well, in that particular group, there was one person that was dominating and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to um, control it such that other people would have equal opportunities to speak. And eventually, as difficult as it was, I needed to gently sort of cut this person off. And at the end of it, I was just wrung out and I spoke to you know, the executive director, and uh, she said that we do know people no favors by over-accommodating for them because what will happen is people will still clear of them. And in that case, it turned out that most of the people in the discussion group that I was facilitating were n of the abled and not the disabled community and didn't have the same experience of accommodation and so we weren't actually treating the person with the disability the same way we would treat somebody with a disability. We wouldn't let somebody else get away with that but yet they were so uh, unused to it but I fortunately was uh, again like on the cutting edge literally on the leading gro growth edge of inclusion and finding it being somewhat uncomfortable, but nonetheless, uh, it you know it worked out. Um, I'm trying to think of. Uh, sorry, I need to go by my notes because I, um, I've got part of my disability is a learning disorder and developmental challenge, and as a consequence, I need to work things out ahead of time. Um, so I was given some questions. So what are my favorite things uh, as a member of the Disability Human Rights Group? And that's that uh, just point form, taking action, feeling of being heard, being valued, being respected, inclusion. I've been developing skills, um, whether they're presentation skills, um, communication skills. Um, I've been validated as a person. Uh, I've got a sense of feeling power versus feeling powerlessness. Um, a feeling productive and contributing member of the community. It's been a boost to my self-esteem. Uh, again, um, I developed um, patience and courage. Uh, I've learned from my peers. Um, I've learned the art of collaboration and cooperation. Uh, another benefit is that I've been continually informed of issues and events that pertain to those of us in, in the disability com community with disabilities and otherwise. Um, and I've been considered, as part of the group, I've been considered and respected as and admired for being a social justice advocate. And as well, another thing that came to mind was and then great opportunities to meet some very uh, talented, courageous um, people, both as parts of the committee and members of the community. So I've met city councillors, um, members of parliament, mayors. I became a first name basis with Mayor of Waterloo and the Mayor of Kitchener and uh, people at different agencies and other social justice advocates, and people um, being invited to various community forums through the Disability and Human Rights Group and the Social Planning Council. I have subsequently 
met a lot of other people from lived experience from different groups, and uh, uh, and and it was a sort of form of outreach as well because I know there's a couple of people that have become members of the group because of my being involved and in meeting people out in the community. Um, so it's brought me out of isolation, which is another part of my disability, is that I will isolate in order to, just because of my disabilities. Um, um, I was asked, what's the importance of lived experience um, in advocacy? Um, those of us with lived experience know about the challenges of being disabled um, in an exclusionary world. It's in our bones, in every cell of our bottle, body, we're forced to deal with the issues that affect us and others, and we need to speak up. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking next. Why is it lived experience doesn't play a role when people make decisions that affect you? People who make decisions affecting disabled lived live in a dimension different wait a minute people who make decisions affecting disabled live in a dimension different than the world of the okay that's it people who make decisions affecting dis, the disabled live in a different dimension they're living in the world of the advantaged who are totally shit. Okay. People who make decisions affecting disabled live in a totally different dimension of those of us with disabilities. The world of the advantaged is what they live in, and they're totally ignorant of the moment by moment, day to day reality of someone with disabilities. So they're the advantaged, making decisions, you know, for the advantaged, and uh, uh, so yep. And so, um, um, so what are some of the things that uh, that I've gotten out of this group, and I th think other people could get out of being a part of this group? is learning to advocate for oneself and others, to join, to develop skills and gain skills like public speaking, um, facilitating, uh, uh, group decision making, communication skills. Um, we gain credibility in the community as part of the Disability and Rights Group. Um, we, along with others with lived experience, um, we have the opportunity to connect with decision makers and with others working towards inclusion. Um, as I said before, we're on the cutting edge of inclusion. Uh, we have a voice, like this gives us a voice and allows our opinions to be heard and even acted upon. Um, we're able to be informed about relevant activities and opportunities within the community. We've developed alliances and have the opportunity to find out what other people are doing in the community. Uh, we've had opportunities to be consulted on issues affecting not only people with disabilities, but the community as a whole. So we were consulted on the well-being survey for the region. We're consulted on uh, on some other things, uh, hugely consulted by um, the Department of Aging and Disabilities, you know, in Winnipeg, uh, and um, trying to think what else. Um, yeah, we're we're being taken seriously, and there's the other concept of capacity building. That's where, you know, we. Again, gain skills and you know just develop under ourselves. And I was asked, how would you bring other people into the group? And so my recommendations has been to have some sort of social event, uh, to go out into the community um, as ambassadors, 
to create a flyer or brochure that focuses on recruitment. Um, we've got a great flyer that covers a lot of territory, but it's rather dry. And uh, I think we could maybe make something a little bit more inviting. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I don't know why some of these words are here. But one of the things I would like to say is that uh, the only requirement for somebody to, be, to join the group is just having respect for other people. Um, otherwise, you know, people are welcome to come in and they will be equal, they will be included, their voices will be heard. We're interested in hearing people's stories of lived experience because we place a great value on lived experience. Um, more information can be gotten off of the brochure. I happened to look at it after I did all this and thought that it was quite comprehensive. Um, and if I was to pick a few moments or memories that um, were special to me about my time with the group, there are many, but some stand out above some of the others. Uh, one of which was the first meeting where I saw so many people with so many different disabilities um, I hadn't seen that wide a range as, because they must have done an incredible amount of outreach um, between uh, the Social Planning Council and Brad and James and Xanthi and whomever else. Um, we met at the Faculty of Social Work downtown Kitchener and there was easy 30 people in the room. Um, but. 20 of those more than likely were people with disabilities. Some of them were attendants of people. That's how disabled they were. Um, the, uh, another major uh, memory for me would be one of our celebrations of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. And in this one particular case, we came and found out that we were going to be going down to Speaker's Corners and doing a rally. Um, so it was like five or six of us, or eight, seven of us, and the executive director of the Social Planning Council, who was facilitating some of our meetings, um, went down there, and sure enough, we did a rally, got you know uh, some press, and that made me feel confident enough that about four or five months later, um, I decided to do a rally uh, to get people's viewpoints on the light rail transit, and not only did I end up doing the rally. I got an article and pictures in the paper, and uh, and basically I just wanted other people to be heard. So I was taking what I was learning from the from the disability and human rights group to the, the other part of my, my life in the world. Um, another um, highlight was when we were going to celebrate the day with International Day of Disabilities person with disabilities, and it was only a week and a half away, and people said, well, there's not much we could really do. I suggested that we might all write a letter to the editor. And so three of us wrote letters to the editor, and sure enough, on the day of the dis persons with disabilities, there were three letters to the editor by members of our group that took up the better part of the page, of the opinion page. And so that was uh, a highlight. Um, I think another one of the highlights was at the forum for the Mayor's Forum for Inclusion, I had put together an inclusionary contemporary dance improv. Um, I adapted from something of my training. I adapted to people with disabilities to be inclusionary. We would sit in chairs instead of being able-bodied in a boat on the floor. And uh, because of the open space concept of people putting topics up and choosing which topics we're going to have who discussing or whatever, I only had one, and so we determined we were too tired to do this, and I felt kind of deflated because I put so much time and energy into this workshop. Well, at the end of the day, when uh, the executive director of the Social Planning Council, Trudy, was wrapping up, she said, Jeff, could you do a five or ten minute, ver five to eight minute version of your workshop? Well, the professional choreographer dancer from Toronto that came in and did the multiple workshops at a professional level 
took more than 10 or 15 minutes to, do, to introduce it, much less. And so I winged it, and I essentially I'm, I'm thinking afterwards that the only way I did that was on pure faith of the previous work and of the, the people involved there that, and, and basically made it happen. Um, uh, so um, I'm just trying to finish off here. Um, yeah, I think we're almost at a tape, yeah. eh? Yeah. Um, how much? So if you want to wrap it up. Yeah, we'll, like a minute or two. Yeah, we got like a minute. Okay. Um, another highlight was going in front of city Kitchener City Council to advocate against the cuts to funding to the Social Planning Council. One counselor emailed me that he appreciated my explanation of the difference between community engagement from the city staff level and from where we were coming from. And he said that he was even considering changing his vote because of that. And indeed, that's what he did. He said that at the next meeting, he said that for the first time in 20 years that he was changing his vote. And lo and behold, if when he said that, the whole city council cracked up and had a big laugh because indeed he was going to vote one way and changed it just by my explanation of, of what inclusion community engagement was compared to dealing with people over the counter at a, at a city building. Um, so I've had the opportunity to meet great people through this group. I've learned from them. I've been inspired by them. Um, had some laughs. I was honored to hear their stories. And I would encourage anybody with any ability, disability, to be a part of the group, uh, to join in. Uh, it's been, it's given my, me value. Um, I've seen other people, you know, gain value and move on and forward. And that would, be, I would say another highlight of it was somebody has saying, I'm going to have to give up the group because I've got a job. And this was somebody that was in, totally... Um, quadriplegic and and uh, uh, and was able to you know go into the workforce 